Good morning, everyone. Kevin here from Skywatcher, and welcome to another episode of the What's Up webcast. We take a look at everything from what's up in the nighttime sky to equipment to helpful tips and tricks. And of course, at the end of the month, we have a special guest on to talk about their specialty in the field of astronomy. Uh, today is Friday, uh, February 10th. Uh, so we're already in the fun, uh, February 10th, 2023. So if you're watching this in the future, that's when this was recorded. Um, the What's Up webcast takes place every Friday, 10 a.m. Pacific, right here at the Skywatcher USA YouTube channel. These are generally live episodes, and if you ever want to go back, they are recorded, so you can go back and watch this at any time if you want to go check out some information on any of the episodes. Um, we also have this in a podcast form. Um, so all of our episodes are also in podcast on Spotify and Apple Music, I think, wherever you get your podcast. Uh, that's where it's at. Um, so if you want to check this out, maybe you're driving along and you want to listen to my voice for whatever reason, um, and learn about something in astronomy, uh, we do have these in podcast form as well. Um, another thing, if you're looking for some cool swag for our what's up webcast, uh, let me get my face out of here. Boop. There we go. Uh, you can go to skywatcher.threadless.com and check out all the cool shirts and all the other fun swag that we have, um, available for our Skywatcher products and the brand and all kinds of stuff. So there's all kinds of cool stuff there as well. Uh, we appreciate you supporting our webcast and just being here and hanging out every Friday with us. Uh, if you like what you see here and you want to have, if you have an idea for a future What's Up webcast, go ahead and email us at info at skywatcherusa.com. Title it What's Up. Um, we do want um, ideas. If you guys have ideas for future webcasts, uh, please send them in. We appreciate it. Um, and then we'll put that in the queue. And then if you do like what you see here, please go ahead and subscribe and leave a like on a video. Um, before we get started, just a couple little announcements. Um, for this year, 2023, uh, we're getting ready to start some of our travel plans. So if you want to see Skywatcher, our first uh, event of the year in the public eye is going to be NIAC and NEF. That's taking place in April. Um, so we're just over eight weeks away from that Jesus uh, from that actually happening um, so we're gonna be at both uh, NIAC and NEF uh, we'll have some of our new stuff there if you want to come check any of that out we'll be happy to see you guys in person it'll be great to get back and see everyone um, so that is April 16th uh, yeah so NIAC is April 13th and 14th um, and then we have the 15th and 16th, which is NEF. If you're not sure what NEF is, it's a big astronomy trade show that takes place in Suffern, New York, where the entire telescope industry basically shows up and shows off our cool, fun stuff. Um, maybe I'll also pick up some deals and have fun like that. Um, but we will be there. I'll be really happy to see all you guys there. Um, following that, we will be at the Texas Star Party in May, um, where we're going to be bringing some of our new stuff, like the CQ350 mount we'll have out there. Um, maybe one of our Quattro 150s. That also is all the new stuff that's actually come out in the last year or so, which is our CQ350 mount, Star Adventure GTI, um, Quattro 150, the Heritage 130 and 140 GTIs. Um, or the Virtuoso GTIs, all that fun stuff. Um, but yeah, there's all kinds of cool stuff that's come out, but we're going to hopefully be out at Texas star. We will be at Texas star party. Um, we will actually be on site for Texas star party, May 16th to the 21st. Um, so if you're coming out and then Trevor, our buddy from Astro backyard, um, who's also in the chat this morning, uh, hanging out with us is coming with us. Um, as well as Ash, his awesome wife. Um, so the Astro Backyard team is going to come hang out with Skywatcher for the week. So if you're at Texas Star Party and you want to come say hi, we're going to have some friends with us as well uh, hanging out with us for the week. So we should have a lot of fun with them. Uh, we appreciate them coming. Um, so the Texas Star Party, we'll, we will be at uh, following Texas. I think we're planning to go on f to Photo Plus. If that actually happens, that's in New York, which is a huge photo show. Um, pretty cool to go to. Um, I think we're planning to have some kind of plan to hopefully get out to Winter Star Party and Ontario Star Fest in August, I think is another one we're planning to actually, uh, hit up 
this year. So we've got a fair amount of stuff that's going on this year, but we are already gearing up for Neef and already for Texas Star Party as well. So it'll be nice to get out and see those familiar places again and see all of our friends there. So anyway, um, so today we're actually going to be talking about a really kind of unique little mount that we've been selling for a little bit. Um, and it's going to be kind of a hot product for this year and next year because of the solar eclipses. Um, and of course, that is our solar quest mount. Um, and if you're not familiar with the solar quest, um, it's kind of a neat little mount. Uh, and if you're not used to seeing one, um, if you're just walking by, it looks very similar to the AZ GTI. Um, in fact, the footprint is pretty much the same. However, there's some differences between the two. Um, and the Solar Quest is a mount that is dedicated solely, solely, um, to observing the sun. Um, it is the, it's only made to do that. Um, so this is a small uh, Altaz uh, go-to mount that has specific technology to actually find, locate, and track the sun. Um, it is only made to track the sun. It does have an 11 pound payload capacity. I'm getting my things going here. There we go. It's about five kilograms. So you can put a fair amount of stuff on this little thing. Um, here's, this is a setup that I had a while ago. Um, this is our Evo Lux 62 and my Daystar um, worked really well. But for an 11 pound capacity mount, you basically have enough room to put most logical 80 millimeter and smaller dedicated refractors on this or whatever your solar telescope is just make sure you're using the appropriate uh filtration and when you're observing the sun so you don't damage your eyes or hurt someone else's eyes your camera or whatever it's going to be i don't need anybody getting hurt we want you to have a good time observing um with it um but yeah the 11 pound payload capacity gives you a lot of room to work with um you know the lunt 40 50 uh, 60, 60 double stack, and even an, uh, probably a single stack 80 would work really well um, on this and very similar products uh, to that. But you've got some room to make it work. Um, built into the mount, we have what's called the HelioFind technology, which we're going to go into a little depth about that. Uh, the mount can be run on various power supplies. It has a built-in battery pack um, where you AA battery pack. You have to supply your own AA's. Um, as well as a 12 volt adapter power plate uh, that comes with the mount when you buy it. And then it does have a V style uh, dovetail plate. Now, because this shares the exact same mounting um, and dovetail plate as the AZ GTI, if you end up wanting to replace the saddle on this mount, you should be able to do that with the ADM saddle that they have designed for the A or for the AZ GTI. That saddle kit uh, should also work on this mount without any issue as well. So if you want to have like a DV saddle or you don't want the saddle that comes with it that has the screw, you want something that's more of like a clamp design. Um, the ADM, uh, I'll try to pull that up. Uh, the ADM one would work. It should run on solar power. You can get batteries that run off of solar. So, so let me explain the helio find because this is kind of the heart of how this mount actually works. So actually, you can see right here that it looks very similar to an AZ GTI, except there's this little um, thingamabob um, on the side of the mount here. So this mount has built-in GPS, which helps it locate the location that it's at. This, this mount is not Wi-Fi. It's completely self-contained. So you put you power it up, you put your favorite solar telescope on it, power it up, and it does the rest. You don't have to do anything. There's no app. There's, there's no calibration. It just does it. That's the cool thing about it. And then it just tracks. Very simple. Um, can you put a PST on it? Yes, um, I have done it. I will kind of explain how I do it. Um, so it works a little bit better on the mount because I find that the way the PST is kind of oriented as far as its eyepiece and the way this mount is designed, they don't, they work, but it's kind of weird. So I'll kind of show you how I went about it to make it work a little bit better when I had a PST. Um, so the mount has built-in GPS. 
the mount will auto level itself once it figures out where it's at. And then the little doohickey here on the side, that is the heliofine sensor. That will actually figure out where the sun is in the sky. And without any calibration to your telescope, it will actually find and locate the sun and put it in the field of view of your telescope. Remarkably well, actually. It's When I first tried one of these, it was actually pretty neat to see how it works. Um, once the mount is on the sun, once it figures out where it's at, you can make some little adjustments to it, which I'll tell you how to do that here in a bit. Um, that'll help improve the tracking for your particular optic. And then it will just track the sun until it runs out of power or you turn it off. Uh, there are no clutches on this mount. Um, I mean, there are, but they are built in there. You can't manually do anything to this mount. Um, so whenever the power goes out, whatever position it's in, it's in that position. So it's not a huge deal because when you turn it on next, it will go through its whole little alignment routine again. Uh, the mount will continue to track even if the heliofine sensor is blocked or obstructed. So once it does its alignment, it's no longer relying on that sensor anymore. We have tested this. We put a sticker over it. So once it does its alignment, figures out where the sun's at, that sensor is no longer needed. So if you're going to a total solar eclipse and it's totality and it's covered, your mount will still track. If there's a cloud, it will still track. If there are clouds, it will be kind of difficult for this to go as accurate as it could be. Um, do you think a Lunt double stack would be too heavy? Uh, the Lunt 80 double stack is probably right on the, right on the edge of what the mount can handle. I have talked to Lunt and they have a few of these, and I think they have used a double 80 on it. I would just make sure that, you know, it's secured down on the tripod well, um, but it should be able to handle a double 80. I would not recommend putting anything heavier than a double stack Lunt 80 on it. Like, I have a Coronado double 90. No way I would put that on this mount. Um, so, yeah, these, these 80, 70, 80 double stacks are probably the max you want to put on it. I do have a customer who's using a Coronado double stack 70 Solar Max 3 on one of these and he says it works perfect. So it will handle kind of that middle range uh, set of dedicated H alpha telescopes. Uh, so using a Solar Quest and also you will notice the PST setup that's on here. Um, I'm going to go into detail about how this particular setup works. I don't have it anymore. I don't have a PST at this point. Um, but I will try to explain how I set it up. Uh, so here's how you work a Solar Quest. Uh, first, you need to power it up somehow, either with eight AA batteries that go inside the little battery chamber, um, or you can use a 12 volt battery pack. What I would say, if you are using an external power source on this mount, is you need to make sure that this power source does not have some off switch. A lot of these batteries that are out there now, these little lithium rechargeable batteries, have an off switch to where if there's not enough power being pulled for X amount of time, it's going to shut off to conserve power. Um, these, this mount, along with like the AZ GTI and the Star Adventure GTI um, and, the, and the Star Adventurers, they can all be powered by an external power source, but they pull so little voltage that a lot of power sources will just automatically turn off and the mount stops tracking. I actually find that this mount works best if you just use double A's. And yeah, it's eight double A's. But the only time it's really using a lot of power is when it's slewing to the sun. The rest of the time, it just does its thing. And it just tracks the rest of the day. No big deal. So I personally would recommend using one of these with AA batteries. And then you don't get any kind of cord wrap either from the power cable or anything like that. It's just a self-contained little mount. Um, so that's just from my personal experience. I would recommend using AA's. So put your power supply in there. You're going to press the power button that's on the back. The little red LED on the back is going to start uh, blinking. It's going to find GPS. Once it finds GPS, that light's going to turn solid red. Um, once the GPS is 
figured out where the mount is at, you'll notice that it will start to auto level the tube and it'll figure out what that is. It'll start moving it around, uh, especially if the mount got turned off or powered off at a previous observing period where the telescope might be up at an angle in some way. Um, when you turn it back on, it will take that telescope from its angle to level. So it will auto level the tube. Once it auto levels, it's going to slew to the sun. Um, it only slews one way. So even if the sun is like right over here and your telescope is here, it's going to go around. Um, it's just how it works. Just let it do its thing. Um, it will slew to the sun and start locating it with that heliofine sensor. Uh, once the mount is ready to go um, and it slews over to the sun, you can make some fine adjustments. Um, there's a little joystick on the back. Um, the joystick's right there. Uh, this is an eight position joystick. It's very smooth. You can make small little corrections uh, to your tracking and centering the sun, depending on what you want to do um, with this joystick. And that's really the only things that are on the mount. There's not a lot you can do. Um, is there a firmware upgradable? Not that I'm aware of. There's almost no reason to mess with the firmware on this mount. And I there's no way that I am currently aware of even upgrading the firmware on this mount. There's no ports on it. Um, there's no way to connect anything. There's no Wi-Fi. So you shouldn't have to mess with anything on this mount. Like I said, it's completely self-contained. Now, at times things can get a little weird. Maybe something's not working right and you need to kind of reset everything. There is a way that you can do the factory reset on this mount and it's fairly simplistic. There's not a lot to it because there's obviously not a lot on the mount. Um, so the way to do the factory reset on this is you're going to take the joystick and move it to the bottom right. And then at the same time, you're going to hold the power button until that red LED flashes. Then the solar quest will reset itself so that's how you do a factory reset on it that's really the only thing you can do on this mount like i said there's no firmware updates there's no need to really mess with anything on this mount that's what makes this a really nice mount for solar observing there's just nothing that can go wrong with it it's great for like an educational uh thing as well um if you do a lot of solar observing and you have a smaller, you know, that 80 millimeter and smaller uh, telescope for the sun, these are perfect little outreach mounts or for a school because there's just nothing that can go wrong with them ultimately. Um, and with the power being built in too with the double A's, you're not hauling batteries around. So it's awesome if you're really into solar observing and you just want something that's going to track. It makes a perfect little platform Um to do it. I have friends who have Lunt 60s and they have this mount and they do amazing solar imaging with it. Um, and it just works. It gives you a nice platform. You don't have to polar align it um, or deal with any of that. It gives you the tracking. You don't have to mess around finding the sun or doing the small shadow on the ground kind of thing. It just gets you where you need to go. Makes your life so much easier when you just want to go out and observe and do your thing. Now, in the box, it pretty much comes with everything that you're going to need um, to get going. You do have the Solar Quest mount head. You have a peer extension. And the peer extension is actually something that's nice to have, especially if you're using like a 60 millimeter or larger. Um, because you don't want the telescope to run into the tripod legs. And that peer extension is going to give you some clearance um, with that. Now, with the Lunt 60s and similar that I've used on here, those normally can get away without needing the peer extension. Um, if you're using a Lunt 80 or something that's got a little bit more length to it, then you might want to consider using that peer extension. But it does come in the box if you need it. And these are also the same accessories that work on the... AZ GTI or the Star Adventure, it's all 3.8 thread. Uh, we do give you the tripod, and the tripod also has that little plastic locking in spreader. Um, and then if you want to use an external 12-volt power supply, there's a little plate 
that replaces the battery uh, pack. Plug, uh, pops in there. It's 12 volt, 2.1 millimeter power adapter that lets you run external power. Like I said earlier, I recommend using AA batteries just from a user experience. It just simplifies everything and you're not doing a lot of slewing. So it's just the initial setup where it slews to the sun. After that, you're not really asking a lot from power consumption. So I find it much more convenient to just use the AA batteries and let it do its thing rather than hauling a big old battery pack or maybe save that big battery pack for your larger solar setup that maybe you have out. Um, now it does use 3.8 thread. So if you don't wanna use the included tripod, you could put it on your favorite fo pro, pro level photo tripod. Maybe you're traveling. Maybe you're going to be traveling for the 2023 uh, annular eclipse and the 2024 uh, total eclipses, and you want to take a photo tripod. You don't have to use the one that we provide in the box. You could just get the mount head and take your favorite carbon fiber photo tripod, or pop it on there and let it do that, um, and just throw it in a backpack if you want. It's small enough to where it would fit in a photo bag. Like I said, if you've seen an AZ GTI. It's not much bigger. It's actually the same rough casting. Um, it's just kind of the guts of the mount are a little bit different, but it's the same gearing. Um, it just it has that uh, heliofine technology built into it instead of having all the go-to uh, assemblies inside of there. So very similar to the AZ GTI, same footprint. So if you have one, it's the same size. It just looks a little bit different, but you can use this on all of your favorite photographic uh, equipment there. Someone did ask earlier about the PST. I kind of jumped ahead there real quick. Um, let me see if I can explain this. So a Solar Quest has no clutches. There's no way to adjust the saddle. And when you get the saddle or when you get a Solar Quest out of the box, you'll notice this is how it is stock. You'll see the saddle right here is actually horizontal and it's in line with the Helio Find sensor. So it's horizontal like that. That works really well if you have a like a Lunt 60 or something that's kind of a standard configuration or it has like a clamshell or mounting rings to where the tube can be like rotated or the diagonal can be rotated. If you're familiar with a PST, a PST basically is a, the tube and then it goes to the, the body and then there's a prism inside of there that bounces light up to the eyepiece. There's no way to rotate that. So you'd have to put a, a V-style dovetail plate mounted to the Solar Quest, and the PST is basically going to be sideways with the eyepiece sticking out away from the mount. That's kind of annoying. Um, what I did, and I modified mine a little bit, is underneath this saddle, in the middle of the saddle, there's a white kind of metalish sticker. Um, that comes off. I mean, you actually have to pull it off. So you're going to start to disfigure your mount a little bit. You might affect your warranty, but if you must know, this is how it works. And if you're going to get the ADM saddle and upgrade it, you have to do this anyway. So the way you upgrade the saddle, I would say, is you take that center sticker off that reveals the four little Phillips screws under there. You take those four screws off and then you can reorient, uh, the saddle any way that you want. Uh, so what I find is if you're doing it with a PST, you take those four screws, you rotate the saddle to where it's vertical. You see right here, it's horizontal. You're going to rotate that 90 degrees so it's vertical. From there, I actually got one of our Star Adventurer um, deck brackets. Let me see if I can bring that up real quick. The deck brackets are not too spendy. Um they're pretty easy to get a hold of, um, but it works really well to give you a mounting uh, thing. Here's the deck bracket. Um, so the way one of these works is it's an L, kind of an L bracket. Um, and the slow motion control assembly, which is the black part of this, is has a quarter 20 on it. So what I actually did is this little fine tune assembly is actually mounted by two small screws. Um, you can't really see them, but uh, it's actually mounted. You see these two holes right here? I'm trying to point at them right, 
right in here. There's one hole there, one hole there. Those are mounting holes for those screws to actually mount into. So what I actually did for mine is I undid those screws and I actually flipped the fine focus assembly, the fine adjustment assembly, this black part, 180 degrees. So I flipped it upside down. So that way the quarter 20 of the fine adjustment is actually sticking up and then you still have your L bracket. It's up the quarter 20 is here and you have your L bracket. So the PST will mount right here. And then that way the whole L bracket will then mount to that newly positioned vertical saddle. Um, and if I have this picture back here, do, 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 do. way back here, um, I'm not sure if I can actually blow this up or not. Um, but you'll kind of see if you look close, I'm sorry, let me see if I can go to full screen there. If you'll see what I'm talking about. So the PST is actually sitting on this fine adjustment that's been flipped and then the dovetail mounts to the saddle. That's how I find it easy to actually work um, a PST on a Solar Quest with some off the shelf stuff without really any modification um, to the mount overall or the PST. You're just getting some stuff and kind of flipping some stuff around. Um, so that would be my recommendation for mounting a, a PST if you wanted to go that route without having it to be in this weird position. Um, if you're going to be doing that, then I would probably recommend just upgrading your your whole assembly at that point. And a, like I said, ADM actually makes it. Here it is right here for the Solar Quest. Um, so... This is the saddle. It comes with a little mounting block that allows it to that DV saddle to actually mate up against the mount. Um, and at that point, because you're already pulling our our saddle off, this makes it easier to actually orient it either horizontal or vertical. So if you're going to do like the PST mod, I guess I would say for the vertical position, it's easier to do it with this. Um, and it looks nice at that point. Um, or however you want to do it. But I have a lot of customers who've actually gotten a Solar Quest or even an AZ GTI, and they've actually gone with the ADM saddle. Uh, they do a very nice job, and it's a very secure saddle. Not that ours isn't, but the nice thing about this particular one is it doesn't mar up the dovetail plates. It's a clamp assembly rather than the screw being a compression uh, setup. So that's something you can do. It's 84 bucks. It's not terribly um, expensive. But that's one of the only off-the-shelf uh, things... I would say you could actually get for a Solar Quest. The Solar Quest is a completely self-contained mount. There's nothing you need to add to it. Um, you just get some double A's in there. Maybe you upgrade the saddle. Maybe you put it on a nicer carbon fiber tripod if you want. But there's really nothing you need to do um, ultimately with this mount. It It's kind of ready to go. Now, these are going to be very popular mounts um for sorry i've got too much stuff going on I'm just checking some things uh, these are going to be very popular for the upcoming eclipses because they are no fuss mounts when it comes to um, observing the sun it does look like we have them in stock so you can actually buy stuff off of our website now so it looks like they are available if you want to get one they're about 530 bucks at the time of this recording or you can go through your favorite dealer um, as well but you can go to our website right now and actually get them 530 um, or talk to your your dealer of choice. Um, I would recommend right now. And this doesn't actually um, just go with the Solar Quest. We have two big eclipses coming up. We have the one at the in October of this year and then we have the total solar eclipse next year in April. And any and everything that's related to the sun is going to just get sucked up over the next couple months, especially the closer and closer we start to get to these eclipses. Let me get to uh, just get to a different spot here. Um, things are going to just, no pun intended, but it, it works. Things are going to evaporate the closer we get to these eclipses. So if there's something you want, whether it's a solar quest or a star adventure or some kind of small camera tracker or a filter or a dedicated solar telescope, now would be the time to actually go get it. 
um, or even those eclipse glasses, whatever it is related to the sun, don't be one of those people who waits to the last minute because it's going to disappear the closer we get. Um, I'm surprised we actually have solar quests in stock right now. So if you want one, I would recommend talking to your dealer or going on our website and actually getting getting that as soon as possible because they're going to disappear very quickly um, with these two major solar events coming up. So, uh, But if you are looking to go for the eclipses anywhere, this is kind of the ultimate mount for that. There's no counterweights. There's no polar alignment. There's small and lightweight. You can use it on your favorite tripod. It holds the majority of optics that you would probably end up shooting an eclipse with anyway. You don't need big telescopes to shoot a nice eclipse image or observe it. Small telescopes work just fine, and this is a mount that really matches well with that and keeps things nice, clean, and easy. Um, there's no headache with it at all, and that's really the advantage of this mount is it's made to just make solar observing easy. So um, with that being said, if there is something that you have your eye on that will make these upcoming eclipses better or something that you just want to see now would be the time to seriously think about getting that and not waiting much longer because the closer we get the crazier stuff is going to get and things are going to start disappearing and then you're just going to be like that person that's going to the store on christmas eve freaking out why can't you get you know some toy and being mad that the store doesn't have it anymore we know when these eclipses are they are coming up. Make sure you're not going to the last minute to get what you want. Make sure you're planning ahead of time. Be smart about it. And that's with anything. But yeah, so that's pretty much the, the solar quest right there. There's not a lot to these mounts. Um, they are a one trick pony. They are only made to observe the sun. But if that is your thing, it's kind of the ultimate mount because there's no headache to it. Put some batteries in it. Put your telescope on it. Press the power button. Let it do its thing. End of story. And then sit back and have fun. So that is the Solar Quest. I know it was kind of a quick episode. Um, I tried to stretch it as much as I could, but I don't want to, you know, drag this out any further. That if you have any questions, now is the time to actually do it. I think I answered pretty much all of them. But um, next week is actually going to be a little bit different. It's along the same lines. It's a it's part, I would say it's it's something that's actually pretty, it's a topic that runs very parallel to the astronomy world, but for whatever reason, you don't see them cross too much. Um, but next week, we're going to talk about intro to meteorites. Um, I love meteorites. Um, I have some display cases full of them that I use for outreach and have found them to actually be really effective companions even if it's a small piece, if you're doing outreach and you hand someone a meteorite, it's kind of like bringing it full circle um, at this point where they get to see space through your telescope and then they get to hold a piece of it. So um, we're going to be talking about meteorites uh, next week. So that'll be a really fun one to do. I look forward to talking to you guys all about that. Um, let's see some questions. Can I use the Star Adventure GTI for an upcoming eclipse? Yes. You just have to make sure you're polar aligned. Um, it's going to... It'll track as well as it's polar aligned, but you can use it for the eclipse if you want. Um, I believe the app, the SynScan Pro app, does have the ability to actually align on the sun um, after you unlock the sun as a capability um, with a math problem in there. That's for safety and security reasons. Uh, let's see. Uh, Lunt 50 double stack is a perfect little telescope uh, to put on a, a solar quest. Uh, the solar class solar class solar quest will work really well with um like i said all the basic stuff not even the basic stuff the majority of equipment out there um i'd say telescopes up to about 80 millimeter are usually pretty good um again with the proper filters if you're talking about dedicated solar telescopes uh the lunt 40 50 60 and the double 80 is something that you're gonna probably be pushing it Coronado PST with kind of the setup I told you guys how to do. That's how I would do the PST uh, or the Coronado 60 would be a good one. And um, if you got a Daystar, uh, like a quark or something like that on a smaller refractor, that would work fine. Uh, how do you polar align during the day? 
you know, I find that I just go out with a compass and adjust my latitude on the mount and use a compass to get as close to north as possible. Um, or you set up the day or the morning before and get polar aligned the day before. Um, there is an app called Polar Scope Align Pro that I like using. And I think somewhere in there, yes, uh, it has this daytime polar alignment uh, capability that's in Polar Scope Align. Um, I've never used it. So I, I couldn't tell you how well it works, but there is a an app uh, widget in there that'll help you do that. Um, so I'll have to play with this sometimes. Um, but yeah, normally my way of doing things is just get your equatorial mount, go outside, use a compass. I use my cell phone. I see Steven Kaiser um, does it too. I use my cell phone compass. I get my mount as close to north as possible using the compass and make sure it's at the appropriate latitude for my location. Most of the time, that's more than enough when we're talking about the sun. If you're trying to do like really advanced imaging or time lapse where the sun's not moving a whole lot, that'd be better if you just went out and set up the mount the night before and got dialed in um, so you know there's no drift. But if you're just doing a rough, dirty kind of thing and you just want to go out and observe, just slap it north and use a compass. That's how I find that that works. All right. Um, if no one has any other questions, uh, you can always email our support at skywatchusa.com to let us know if you have any questions on things. Uh, the solar quests are in stock. Go grab one if you want one. Um, now would be the time to do it. I would not wait. Um, next week, we're talking about meteorites. That'll be a lot of fun. And uh, let's see what... Sorry, guys, as the questions come through, what camera would you recommend to use for solar images? Uh, it really depends on your telescope. Uh, if you're using a H-alpha telescope or H-alpha solar filter, monochrome cameras all the way. I highly recommend monochrome cameras. Uh, one of the most popular cameras that are out on the market right now that I've seen really good results in are is the Apollo M Max from oh, Player One. Um, I've seen a lot of people using that camera really, really well um, for shorter focal lengths uh like a zw 183 monochrome works really well because it's really tiny pixels um a 174 uh monochrome would be good as well so but if you're using narrow band filters like hydrogen alpha or calcium monochrome without a doubt color doesn't need to be involved you can do color but it's not ideal so those are the cameras that I see are most popular for solar observing. Uh, when will the Sky Adventure, Star Adventure GTI be back in stock? Probably late spring into early summer. Somewhere in there, I think, roughly. We're trying to get them faster. Um, somewhere in there, though. So I would recommend if you want one, just put an order for one and wait for it. But yeah, Star Adventure GTI is probably early summer-ish, maybe. Somewhere in there, but... We're trying to do things. Uh, we're trying to get stuff as fast as we can. So don't quote me on that. That's just kind of a rough time frame. All right. Um, if you don't have any more questions, I know we're kind of wrapping this episode up a bit early, but uh, that's all I have for you today. Um, so next week, we're going to be talking about meteorites. That'll be really cool to talk about. Talk space rocks. Um, if you like what you see here on the Skywatcher What's Up webcast, please go ahead and subscribe and leave a like on a video. It lets us, know we, lets us know we're doing a good job. If you have an idea for an episode, go ahead and email us at info at skywatcherusa.com and title it What's Up. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it. I hope you have a great weekend. It's Super Bowl weekend, so hopefully you have a good time doing that. There is way too many people here in Phoenix because the Super Bowl is here. And we also have uh, a big uh, golf event going on not far from where I live. So everyone is here. Um, but the weather is nice and it'll be a good time. Um, so hopefully you have a good time. If sports aren't your thing, because they're certainly not mine, um, go out and do some observing. It should be a nice, fairly dark weekend as well. Uh, but thank you very much for watching. We appreciate you guys uh, being here. Good luck to everyone who's shooting the totem targets. Um, we did ship all the patches out, so you should be receiving yours. Um, 
But yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you so much for watching. Please have a safe weekend and we will see you guys next Friday when we talk meteorites. So take care, everyone. Be safe. And we will talk to you guys next week. Clear skies. Bye.